I'm Dr. Brad Hafford, archaeologist and economic anthropologist. Welcome to Note Nook, where I take a close look at a banknote from the relatively recent past. In this series, I'm analyzing old paper money from around the world, paying close attention to one example in each episode. As an anthropologist, I'm more interested in what money says than what it's worth, and it says a great deal about the government that issued it and the people who used it. Today, we look at a 10 Nuevo Sol note issued in Peru in 2001. We begin by looking at the obverse, or front of the note. This side typically emphasizes the issuing authority and often carries an image of an important person from the country. In this case, the important person is not a political leader, but a pilot in the Peruvian Air Force. His name was Jose Abelardo Quinones Gonzalez, and he joined the Jorge Chavez Central Aviation College in 1935 and was awarded gold wings as the best pilot of the year in 1939. He then fought and died in the Ecuadorian-Peruvian War of 1941, aged only 27. He was initially assigned to Acrobatic Squadron No. 41 to demonstrate his skills. In early July of 1941, Ecuadorians tried to cross the Zeromilla River into Peru. At first, Quinones and his squadron were instructed to fly reconnaissance over the area, but on the 23rd, they received the order to attack Ecuadorian positions at Quebrada Seca. While descending to release his bombs, Quinones reportedly came under heavy enemy fire. His plane was badly damaged, but instead of bailing out to save his life, he decided to complete the mission, flying directly into the Ecuadorian battery of guns to silence them. He is buried on the Las Palmas Air Base in Lima, and the remains of his plane are exhibited there as well. In the background, at the center of the note, we see a display version of the plane he flew on that fateful day. It is an NA-50 fighter, nicknamed the Torito, or Little Bull. Deeper in the background, in yellow ink, is a view of the aeronautical school Quinones attended at Las Palmas, named for an aviation pioneer who also died in flight in 1910, after achieving the first air crossing of the Alps. To the right of Quinones' portrait, we see the Peruvian coat of arms. It bears many symbols of the country, including the national animal, the vicuña, a South American camelid related to the llama. It also has the quinchona tree, which is the source of quinine, or quinine, if we say it as the British do. And it also has a cornucopia that represents abundance. But in this case, the abundance is of mineral resources. There are other symbols on the note that speak to Peru's more ancient historical and cultural heritage. At bottom right are glyphs in the Incan style, displaying a spider and a bird. Farther to the left is another Incan symbol. This one is the sun god, Inti, patron of the Inca state. From 1985 to 1991, Peru's currency was called the Inti. There had been struggles with hyperinflation in the 1970s and 80s, and issuing a new currency was an attempt to address it. In this case, hyperinflation continued, and Peru issued the new soul only a few years later. The name soul, as a currency, ultimately derives from the Roman solidus, but it is also the Spanish word for sun, so the inclusion of the Incan sun symbol is quite appropriate. And rising up and away from the solar disk are metal foil circles, like bubbles of glittering sunshine. These are part of the security features of the note, making it difficult to copy. This note has many security features. Not only is there high detail, subtle background colors, and metallic circles, but the denomination is printed in a rectangle of half gold and half green lines that show different patterns from different viewing directions. 10 is printed more clearly nearby, and here, if we zoom in closely enough, we can see the word Peru repeated within the number itself. Of course, the denomination is written out in Spanish, and there's a serial number to identify the individual note. Looking more closely in this area, we see still more security details in the background. These link to the aviation theme as they are propellers, subtly embedded in the lines. At the far right of the note, there is another number 10. This time, it's printed in slightly raised lines of purple metallic ink. 
And running along the edge behind this number is a small repeated text line that reads Banco Central de Reserva del Peru. This is, of course, the issuing bank, and its name is emblazoned across the top of the note. Faith in the Central Reserve Bank and the nation's government is the only thing that ever backed this note. It's true for almost all modern currencies. They are issued by fiat without backing of any particular commodity. To further strengthen the faith in the circulating note, signatures of financial authorities are very often included on the front, and this one is no exception. Here we see the signatures of the president, director, and general manager of the bank. A final security measure needs to be noted, the watermark. This is an area of the paper that looks to be blank, but has been made with varying thickness so as to embed an image within it. The image can be seen with a strong backlight, like so. It is the portrait of Quinones, with the small number 10 for the denomination. And with the backlight, we see two more embedded security measures. Near the center of the note is a strip of repeated text, Peru 10 that was not visible in normal light. And the security threads within the paper are much more visible as well. These are small colored threads in the paper pulp that do not completely bond, but remain as trace markers. All of these features would have to be imitated to make a passable copy, and that's not easy to do. But counterfeiters still succeeded at times, and governments are always improving security measures to make banknotes still more difficult to copy. Now, Let's look at the reverse. The back of the note continues the aeronautical theme and its connection to Jose Quinones Gonzalez. The central image is of his Caproni 113 biplane flying upside down. The engraving is based on a photograph of Quinones' aeronautical final exam when he flew inverted only two meters above the water. The image is accompanied by the date the feat was accomplished, and Quinones' signature. In this corner, we also see the sign of the printers, De La Rue. This is a British company that frequently makes banknotes for many nations around the world. Once more, we see airplane propellers in the background, but this time they are in overprint as silver ink. There is also a subtle orange design near the center of the reverse. Within it, propellers are also seen, but this time in negative space. Here there is also an orange circle in an Incan or perhaps Chimu design. It harks back, as do some of the symbols in the obverse, to Peru's more ancient history. Text on the reverse is sparse. The bank is the most prominent, and the only other text is the denomination, spelled out and printed in dark green. In 2001, 10 Nuevos Soles was worth close to three U.S. dollars. In 2016, the Nuevo portion was dropped, so that today the currency is solely known as the Sol. So what does this note tell us about Peru in 2001? Through much of the 20th century, Peru was involved in border skirmishes with its northern neighbor, Ecuador. Agreements on the border were never solidified by treaty, and incidents often escalated the situation. The so-called Guerra del Cuarentiuno, the War of 41, erupted over incursions across the border at the Zeramillo River. It's in the far northwest of Peru, but there are conflicting accounts of how it started and who fired the first shot. Peru says that Ecuador invaded its territory. Ecuador says that minor incidents between border patrols were used as an excuse for Peru to invade. In either case, the situation rapidly escalated, moving to a zone known as Quebrada Seca, Dry Creek, and this was the site of Quinones' eventual plane crash. The war lasted only a month, but didn't settle the border dispute. More skirmishes followed, and in 1981 there was another brief escalation, called the Paquisha War. Yet another, the Senapa War of 1995, finally led to a settlement, as in 1998 the two countries signed a peace agreement brokered by Brazil. So this note was printed quite soon after the decades of turmoil between Peru and Ecuador finally came to an end. But of course, the note doesn't really depict such strife. Instead, it celebrates a man who died in the earliest years of the conflicts. It is praise for a brave and talented man who died far too young. But there is a military aspect. There are conflicting accounts of Quinones' military mission and the story surrounding his ultimate sacrifice. 
Peru states that Quinones took heavy fire from anti-aircraft guns, but Ecuador claims there were no anti-aircraft batteries in the area of Quebrada Seca and that they had no ammunition for such batteries at any rate. We can't know what really happened, but as far as the note's concerned, that doesn't matter. Quinones is a Peruvian hero for his dedication to his country, and he has been roundly lauded across the nation. Not only does he appear on this note, but he was promoted posthumously to captain, and he was declared a national hero in 1966. Bank notes almost never detail the circumstances of the people they highlight. If you didn't know Quinones' story and you saw this note, you would probably only deduce that he was a skilled aviator. I hope you enjoyed looking at this note with me. I'm Dr. Brad Hafford. Join me again next time on Note Nook, part of my series, Money Talks.